What is going on fellow web developers? My name is Tyler Potts and in today's video we're going to be building this HTML and CSS only profile card. Um, but here you go, you've got a profile picture, you've got the name and when you hover over it, the, other, the rest of the elements like a description or you can even have job title or whatnot here, um, some sort of bio or information there. You've then got through profile or another button let's, such as a contact button. So let's say if you want to send them a direct email, you can just hit that. Um, and there you go, you can see there's some different animations, it's a nice little animated card and it opens straight up and it doesn't take up much room until you hover over it, which is nice. So, without further ado, let's get in to the code. Okay guys, so we'll, we only need two files for this, we're in an empty directory inside of VS Code and I'm just going to say index.html and then we're just going to need main.css. So, oh, and we're also going to need the image, so let me just drop that in there. Okay, guys, now the image is in there, and that's added in there. You can either get your own image, or this will be in the repository on GitHub. You can download all the code there. Let's close this. Let's zoom in once, and let's start off with some boilerplate code. So we've got our doc tape, our HTML, our head element, some meta details, and a title. This is going to be CSS profile card. Um, and now what we need to do inside the head is link our CSS to make a reference. So we're just going to link to main.css. Um, just like that, so it's ready to go. Now, inside of our body, we're going to have a main tag. And then inside of this main tag, we'll have the actual card diff. Now, inside the card diff, we're going to have an image block, we're going to have a name block, and we're going to have a content block in there. So let's start off with the image. So inside of the image, uh, actually, you know, let's just start off by just saying uh, hello world in here. Obviously, it's in a weird place. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to run a surfer. Uh, you can just double click the index HTML to open it up in a browser. Uh, that'll work. But if you have M or node installed with NPM, you can also run MPX live surfer dot in your terminal to start a surfer, as you can see there. And we get hello world right there, which is perfect. So let's finish up the markup here. So we're going to have an image. Inside the image, we're just going to have pp.png, uh, just stand for profile picture there. And that's all we need in there. So you can see there's a huge profile picture now um, just sitting in there. Inside of our name, we could just write any name, such as Tyler Potts. And inside of our content, we're going to have a paragraph, which is a lorem 20. Just doing small to add a few different elements in. We probably end up changing the amount of text in there anyway. And then a diff called the buttons where we're going to have two buttons. Button times two. In the first one, we're just going to say view profile. In the second, we're just going to say contact. Uh, I'm going to break these onto individual lines. And there you go. That's all the markup you need for the card. So you just need this diff here. You can see we have the card, the image, a name, content and the elements inside of that too and that's how simple the html is for this project if you scroll down you'll see all the details there as well so now inside of our main.css we're going to add in a root now root allows us to do a few different things but the main one is to have um, some variables and as you can see inside here we're going to have a primary and i'm just going to use hot pink as our primary color we're then going to have a grey, which is just going to be a light grey of 888. We're then going to have a card width. Um, again, using CSS variables here to make things easier. Um, and we're going to have an image width, which is going to be a calculation um, of card width divided by 1.5. So we're going to have it a, a quarter or three quarters of the size of what it is. I think that's my brain's not working. 1.5. One would be obviously one, and then 0.5 is half. You know what I'm saying. My brain's not working. Math isn't what we're doing right now. Let's go to margin. We have margin zero. We're going to have padding zero on everything. We're going to have box sizing for the box. And we're going to have a font family. Now, you can use any font family you want. I'm just going to use Fire of Sans and Sans Serif. Um, I should import this using Google Fonts, but because this tutorial, I have it on my machine, so I'm just going to leave it at that. That should work fine. Now, underneath this, we're going to have main. Now, we're going to style our main to have a min height of 100 vertical height or viewport height, which is going to be the whole of this page. It's going to be a minimum height of that. We're then going to set the uh, background image to be a linear gradient, um, and that's going to be two 
bottom right. This is going to have a uh, hot pink as one. We could probably put primary there, but that's fine. And then just standard pink as well to have that slight gradient you can see there. Um, what we want to do is align items uh center because sorry we need to display this as flex first how's that one works we need to display it as flex a line item center and then also justify content center as well to bring everything to the middle there you go you can see things are starting to move around now once we've done that we want to get started with our card so inside of our cards we're just going to give it a position of relative because we're going to have some absolute elements inside of it We'll give it a whip of 100%. And just real quick, I'm going to comment out this image because it's currently breaking the viewport here, uh, which we don't want. We want to actually see what's going on. So we're going to say whip 100%. Max width is going to be equal to our card width. And then our background color is going to be white. So there you go. You can see the actual um, card now itself. We're going to have a border radius of 1 rem, which is about 16 pixels, um, a padding of 1.5 rem, and we're going to have text align center. Once we've got that, we're going to have a box shadow of 0, not 0 0.5 rem, that will just be 3 pixels and 6 pixels. And that will just be, this will be RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0 0.1 there. Just have a subtle gradient in there. And we want to transition on this of 0 0.4 seconds. And there you go. You can already see this is looking a lot better. We've hid the image for now, but we're going to unhide it now to actually start styling it. So you can see that's quite big. It's huge. Um, so we're going to do the element outside of it. So we've got this image here. We're going to style that first. So let's go here. We're going to say dot cards dot image, and we're going to add in a position of relative again because we're going to have a relative element inside of here. We're then going to have a width of a hundred percent, a max width of far or just hyphen hyphen image width, which we'll do our variable there. We're then going to say its height is the exact same. So we're going to say far image width because we want it to be a square. So we want it to be both the same width and the same height. Um, and I've done max width here. This is actually just supposed to be width. That was an accident doing max width. And we're going to have a border radius of 50% to make sure it's rounded. A box shadow of the same shadow here. So we're going to have this same shadow here, and there you go, you can actually now start seeing this element. Uh, but you can see it's sat to the left here. So what we want to do is give it a margin of zero or even minus eight rem to bring it up, to bring it outside of the box. We then want it to be auto on the left and right, and then 1.5 rem below it to actually push down the content. There you go, you can see it's now seeing above the elements here, uh, which is exactly what we want. We then want a transition of 0 0.4 and an overflow of hidden because uh, we don't want any elements overflowing it. We want a padding of 0 0.25 rem. Let's just bring this up underneath that and set it to that. Um, and finally, we just want a background color of white so you can actually see it. So there you go. That's the element there uh, floating above the actual cards element here just so it's slightly off center. It looks pretty cool um, and that works. So now let's actually style the image. We're going to say card.image. And now we just need to uncomment the image. So you can see there now it's actually hidden with the overflow. Um, but we just want to set width to 100%. Um, we can then set a border radius of 50% if we wanted to. Although with the overflow, it's not. Oh, no, it is necessary. We will need the radius. Um, we then need a transition of 0 0.4 and also a border of three pixels, solid, far, primary. And there you go, you can see that is there and that's what it looks like with the little uh, border around it. We're then gonna do the hover event on side of, inside of the card. So, well actually, no, we're gonna style up the card content underneath this because we don't actually want it to be fittable straight away. So we're gonna say card.content and we're going to set the max height to be zero on that. So you can see there now it's not hovering in it. 
We then want it to have an overflow of hidden, so the content's actually now invisible. We would then like to have a transition of 0 0.4 seconds and an opacity of 0 as well, because we want it to fade in. Let's get then the content card dot content and get the paragraph. And here we just want to set the color to be variable of gray. And the font size of 1.25 rem there. 1.125 rem, sorry. Um, I know we can't actually see that right now. So let's just remove these three quickly, just so you can actually see what it look like when it's actually done. I've also just noticed we are 150, oh, we are 150 times zoomed in there. And I was wondering why the text was so big. It's because we were zoomed really far in. And also we have a bit too much text. I think we'll limit the, the actual thing to about, and that's a, bit, that's a lot better there. So let's go back to our main and then under, underneath our paragraph, we can now start doing our card huffer effect. So let's re-enable this, save. Let's go to huffer. Oh, sorry, we are missing one more thing as well. We're actually missing the card name as well. So let's just take this and put this uh, just above the card content underneath the image. Uh, I'm just going to give this a color of far gray, um, a font size of 1.5 rem to make it bigger, and a margin bomb of 0 0.5 rem or 1.5 rem. Actually, that should only be visible on... We'll give it a transition, and then that should only be fitable when it's hovering. So let's do our card huffer now. Finally, the bit we've all been waiting for. So in our card huffer state, we wanna we don't want to actually change any CSS properties. What we want to change is some variables. And if we change the variables when you huffer, it will change them for everything else. So if we go into our card and we say when you huffer, we're gonna say the card width. So we're gonna say card width is now going to be 480 pixels instead of the default. So there you go, you can see that now widens because our default was 320 and we've just changed that to 480. Again, feel free to tweak these values to match whatever you want. We're then gonna change our image width to have a new calculation and the calculation is gonna be the far hyphen hyphen card width divided by two instead of the one because we don't want it too much bigger so you can see that slightly grows as well and that's all we need to do for that card section we now need to say card on huffer image and we want to change the margin top to be minus four rem so we want to actually lower it when we hover it you can see there it now comes in if we take this off oh and we try and hover you can see it stays high but if we now save and do that you can see it shrinks in and it looks a lot better Let's then go to cards. Oh, sorry. We also want to change the border radius. I no longer want this to actually be um, round. I want this to be a border radius of 1.5 or no, 2 rem. So there you go. You can see that changes, but the image doesn't change. So we need to change that as well. So we need to say card on her forget the images image. Um, and then we're just going to set the border radius to 2 rem as well. So there you go. You can see that now changes when you hover, which already looks pretty cool. So let's scroll down here. Let's now do the card's name. So card on hover, we're going to get the name, and we're just going to set the margin bar to 1.5 rem. So you can see when I hover, it pushes it down as well. So then I'm going to get cards, um, sorry, cards on hover. We're going to get the content. And here we set the max height, opacity, and overflow to be, so, well, these two are the ones we need to focus on. So we need to set the max height to something a bit higher. So we're going to say max height, oh, max height, and let's say 300 pixels to start with. We may have to raise that. So you can see there it now grows. We also want to set the opacity to 1. And there you go. You can see that fades in. That looks about right as well in terms of the height. So we'll leave that as that. Um, perfect. We also want to set here the overflow to be visible. So now we've got the basic hover effects in place. We're still missing the button styling, which we should add just above the hover statuses here. So let's just say here card.content.buttons. Now inside of this buttons, we want to display it as a flex. Um, we don't need any of, well, I guess 
that will work, I guess. Display flex, just for content center. And there you go. You can see they're now sat in a nice place. Let's also align items center as well. So they sit beside each other in case one becomes bigger than the other for some reason. Then let's get the card content dot buttons button. So that's a singular button inside of there. And we're going to reset the button. So we can say appearance none, border none, outline none, and background none so if we now hover over you can see there's nothing we just need to undo one of our resets by setting a court cursor of pointer so you can see they're clickable and now let's break this up by splitting it out in the css and now let's just like the actual styling for this so we're going to display both of them as block we're going to make sure they have a bit of padding so 0 0.5 rem or 1 rem i always go more padding on the left and right uh, than i do on top and bottom um we also want to set a min width I'm going to say about 160 pixels for this, but feel free to change it to what you want, just to make sure they both have a bit of consistency in size. Let's set the background color to be our variable, our primary. So you can see they're looking a bit better, but we need the color to actually contrast a bit better. So let's make them white as well. There you go. That's looking a lot better. Let's set the font size to 1.25 rem. Uh, much better. And let's say the border radius to 1 rem. That may be a bit too much. Let's set it to 0 0.5. There you go. Let's give them a margin of 0, my, or 0 0.5 rem like that to give them some space between each other. And let's add a transition on here to say 0 0.4 seconds as well. Now let's do this on hover. So let's copy this and say when we hover over these buttons, we want to do some cool sort of animation. Now, I thought about different animations. One of the ones I do is a box shadow of 0, 3 pixels, 6 pixels, RGBA, with all the same values as before. Um, and then we want to do a, some transforms. Now, the first one I want to do is translate the Y by about minus 0 0.5 rep. So now when we hover, you can see they kind of bounce up and they get a box shadow behind them. It look like they're kind of floating. But we can one-up this. We can actually scale these as well to make them look like they're getting closer to you by doing 1.15 to make it grow from 1 to 1.15 or 1.15. So let's now try this. So when we hover over our cards, you can see we hover over the button, the button actually grows, and it looks like it's actually kind of coming towards you in some sort of way, which is kind of cool. Um, and there you go. So that is how we build this card. It's pretty simple. It works pretty well, and it's small and compact until you hover over it to see the full details. So guys, if you've enjoyed this CSS tutorial, let me know, and I'll do more of them in the future. Leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and leave a comment if you have any questions or just if you have any comments um, and guys if you get stuck or you have any issues or you want to do something a bit custom feel free to jump in my discord server and be like hey i've got this question i've got this error there's specific channels for specific things so definitely check which channels are right for what question you have hop in our discord server it's an amazing community and someone will be happy to help you out or answer your questions for you so for now guys thank you all for tuning into this video and peace out.